my trusty threshold cam uh, candle from Target is reaching the end of its life. I have a new one on the table, but it's a different brand and a different style of wood wick, and I'm worried it's a bit loud and aggressive. It might work. <clears throat> we can imagine it's a torch, maybe. But do let me know, please, if it's too much. Okay, with that out of the way. Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Four Against Darkness. After breaking out of prison, our party is working off a debt to the De Vigna Marcia family. They are essentially indentured servants, working, working for the family as mercenary dungeon delvers and paying for the privilege to do so. In our first post-prison break adventure, we were escorted to the Seething Scar, uh, where um, we were to retrieve a cat's eye amulet. We found it on the dungeon's final boss, an orc brute, and returned it to the family. In our second post-prison break adventure, we entered the Palace of Nightmares. I've now transferred that dungeon to my journal here. Um, we were looking for a throwing knife of flight, which we uh, had been lost, to a devouring protoplasm. The party located it here in room six. <clears throat> um, yeah, I still, with, with them being in debt, uh, I just lo love this idea of um, keeping track of the assets and revenue they obtain or encounter at least in every dungeon. Um, so you can see the map here is numbered. The entrance was breached. A large troll is now deceased. Room three was empty, confirmed. Giant toads deceased and so on. Knolls, large troll, cockatrices, orc looters vacated. We defeated some of them, but the rest fled. Possessed undead dwarves likewise vacated up here in room 12, and a spear trap that was sprung. So I added up our revenue. The only thing I wasn't sure of was this, um, uh, where is it? Two-handed sword plus two. That is from uh, Fiendish Foes loot table, and there's no value listed. It's a magic sword. The only person um, who could use it is Jim. Barbarian Jim, our warrior. Barbarians, so Throck, um, they don't use magic. They eschew it. So, and, and um, Jim already has an enchanted sword. He rolls with advantage on his, and I, I think he prefers that one. He got that from a lady in white in, in their prison break attempt. I think that was on the third level or so at the very end of their adventure. So I wanted to sell that. There's no cost listed in Fiendish Foes. So I went to uh, the core rules. And in the core rules, it just says that weapons are worth half their cost, rounded down, which would be seven gold pieces. It says other magic equipment are worth D6 times D6. So when I rolled that, I rolled two threes, which would be nine gold pieces. That didn't seem, neither, that seems way too low for a two-handed sword plus two to attack. In Twisted Final Fights, um, it has masterwork weapons. that are They're not magic, they're just really well crafted. And their value is d6 plus four times its basic cost. And when I use that formula, uh, what did I roll? I forget what I rolled, but it worked out to be a 90 worth 90 gold pieces. That seems more reasonable, so that's what... That's the credit that the Devigna Marcia accountant is giving them as they trade in these gems and swords and gold. And so that all adds up to 860 gold pieces, which is a nice chunk off of their debt. Their remaining debt is now 4,357 gold pieces. After uh, a little bit of restocking, I bought another bag of nails. That might be the only thing I had to buy. That's, they, they, they breezed through that last dungeon. 
So, uh, what else here? Completing the quest. So now they're, they're returning this throwing knife of flight to to the quartermaster on the on the ship, and um, that is their floating headquarters. That brings them to faction level two. The max is five. We'll start looking at things there when we get to um, faction level three and up. Maybe I'll start pulling in some of that stuff from greedy gifts of the guild masters. Um, but we're still just newbies. Faction level two is still really low. But completing this patron quest earns us one another XP roll. So we've got Throck at level three, Elric at four, Blesk, our elf, at four, right? Yeah, and uh, Jim is at three. So we could level up Jim or Throck, maybe. That'd be our best bet. I don't know who I prefer. Maybe I want to level up Throck since he's in the front row. So he has to roll a four or better. Uh, one. <laughs> so he did not level up. Um... We have carried over our minion count from the last adventure. When that gets, it's at six currently, so uh, when that gets to 10, we'll get another XP roll. Um, we get one more thing to do from turning in the throwing knife of flight. The patron uh, quest reward is two random spell scrolls. And we have a list of the spells here and the core rules little table at the bottom so yeah our quartermaster is going to open that closet full of scrolls pull out two random scrolls and what does he get we've got a protect scroll and a lightning bolt scroll those will both go to our elf so protect and lightning bolt blesk scroll of protect that adds a point of defense I think uh, to um, anybody whoever she casts it on for the duration of a single battle if I recall correctly and scroll of lightning bolt that's her favorite spell although sleep is a strong contender um, I did some updating of the character cards after we last played, and the only thing I'm not sh entirely sure of is how elves handle spells. Um, I think I'm doing this right. Uh, they can cast uh, their level number of spells per adventure. So that would be four. So I've given her four prepared spells, three lightning bolts, and asleep. Um, it, the, the language about the elf and the core rules is a little confusing to me. That's with what I'm going to If I read it just literally, it looks like they can only, they can prepare less spells than they can cast, which doesn't make sense. So I'm going with this. They can cast their spells per adventure. Wizards can cast two plus their level, if I remember correctly. So they're not quite as um, flexible as wizards. Uh, but then they also, they attack better with weapons. So I think that's their deal. I think I'm doing that reasonably. Um, okay, I think that's everything to show and tell from our last adventure. Let's, uh, let's see where we're headed next. Our third adventure. We're going to, I'm going to incorporate um, all the supplements I've been using this time. So, Fiendish Foes, Twisted Dungeons, Twisted Final Fight, Twisted Minions, um, Twisted Hordes, we'll do it all. And then, if assuming we survive this one, this party uh, will enter a new tier of adventure. Not in this adventure we're going on now, but the one after this. And that'll be four against the Abyss. But for now, let's see if we can just handle all this core stuff, plus these twisted supplements and the um and the fiendish foes which i really like so what are the divigna marcias sending us after this time so twisted hordes 
Uh, these are treasure hordes, not like hordes of villains. We're going to roll a D100. Uh, so where's my 10-sided die here? Move our six-sided into the shadow. 92. We are way down here. 92 is an anger mace. This magic mace, a bludgeoning hand weapon, has no bonus to attack rolls until the user is hurt in combat. In the following turn after being hurt, the user gains a bonus to his or her attack roll equal to the number of life points lost in the previous turn. Oh, neat. And then there's an example. Okay, so we are after an anger mace. Anger mace. And let's see who has it. Twisted Final Fights. I believe this is a D. Where's the table? Here we go. Another D100 roll. 45. A Gaunt Troll. That's something. 45. Gaunt. Uh, let's do it this way. We're going to... Where's the Gaunt Troll? Cyclops egg. There we go. Gaunt Troll. Highest character level plus four boss. So if we ran into him right this moment, he would be level eight. Um, he'd have eight life and four attacks per turn, four claw strikes, each inflicting one damage. Every time any of your heroes rolls a 1 on any die roll, the Gaunt Troll performs one additional Claw Strike at that character. This attack happens out of sequence, interrupting the hero's turn, and its effects are applied to me. So basically, if you roll 1, um, you need to roll... Def not only do you fail at what your attack, you'll have to roll for defense. Gaunt Troll for one additional Claw uh, and you could get hit and take a turn. I take a take a point of damage. Gaunt trolls have a four and six chance of regenerating one lost life point at the beginning of their turn. Oh dear. Dwarves, gnomes, and halflings. We don't have any of those. Gaunt trolls hate dwarves. Not a, we, again. No dwarves in our party and treasure. Okay, so we're a gaunt troll who's um, guarding this anger mace. Gaunt. Roll. That's where they're sending us. Uh, what else can we do? Where are we going? Let's. Uh, so I've got the GM's Miscellany Dungeon Dressing. This is my favorite name generator. So we, first we roll on the table here. Uh, to see what form the name takes. Eight. The Descriptor Complex. So we roll a Descriptor. Dungeon name subject. Descriptor. It's going to be a D100. I got 66. So we're down here. Bane, Torment, or Blight. And then we roll a Complex. Bane, Torment, or Blight, 79, Rest, Torments, Rest, Bane, Blight, Rest, Torments, Rest, what was the other one, Bane, Torment, or Blight, Blighted, Rest, Blighted, Rest, Torments, Rest, I like Torments, Rest, we'll go with that. So we are going to torments, especially with the uh, the anger mace and this gaunt troll hiding out here at torments rest is a gaunt troll guarding an anger mace. All right, and now um, we didn't use this last time. Let's see what we get. Twisted dungeons. This is going to be. Yeah, two, we're going to roll two D8s, 
So eight, 82 wandering werewolf hunters. Wow. Okay. That's on page 32. Wandering, wandering werewolf hunters. As soon as you roll an event in the current dungeon, ignore that event and apply this encounter instead. The party meets a group of werewolf hunters that are selling silvered weapons and wolvesbane bunches at 25% off. If you buy any, the final boss of this adventure will automatically be a werewolf. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if we can use this for this one because we know what our final boss is. He's a gaunt troll. Um, that's tempting because I like collecting silvered weapons, but let's try again and see what we get. 85. Mana Abundance. Uh, page 33. This sounds like it's going to make things easier. Where did I get 85? This dungeon was built in an area overflowing with magical energies. This makes my life much easier for wizards. All spellcasters gain one additional life point to represent their increased awareness. Uh, caster has a three and six chance every time they cast. However, on a roll of six, the caster suffers one life damage. Okay, I like that. There's a bonus, but there's a downside. If we if we really knock it out of the part, it hurts. <laughs> We'll do that. Um, mana abundance. One additional life point. So I'm going to indicate that how. Bless. Uh, yeah. We'll, uh, I'll do a little dotted line here. I don't know if I'm going to remember that. So um, notes. Torments rest. Mana abundance and I'm gonna write down where this came from uh, 85 this is in uh, twisted dungeon 85 okay one additional life point to represent oh and I guess Elric as well he's a spellcaster I assume uh, I don't know if Elric counts I think I think we'll stick with just Blesk and because uh, she's she's more like a wizard. Um, in addition, every time a spell is cast, the caster has a three and six chance of retaining it, or a four and six a four and six chance if the caster is level five. So we're not so three and six chance to retain spell. I'm gonna just note that. Where do I note that? Three and six chance. To retain spell cast and on a, on a six suffer one damage on a six take one damage I assume that applies to spells and things as well example Drac the sorcerer casts a fireball at a group of goblins before deleting the spell from the play sheet Player rolls d6. The result is a 3, so Drac does not erase the spell from the play sheet. This effect does not apply to spells... Ah, here we go. This effect does not apply to spells cast through magic items or scrolls. Okay. There we go. That is what we're doing. I think we'll stop here for this episode. When we play again, we will enter Torment's Rest. Looking for the Gaunt Troll who's guarding the anger mace. And uh, until then, friends, keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm. Thanks for watching.